Today, we're finally moving into using ControlNet with Flux. Before watching this video, make sure you are already familiar with Flux and Comfy UI, or make sure to watch my two older videos to get familiar. All right, let's get right in. First, you need to go to this workflow page and download this workflow. Once that is done, you need to do the usual drag and drop, install missing custom nodes, and you should get this. I've done this multiple times, so I will not go over the whole installation. Now, before doing anything, you need to zoom in here. You can see we have some toggle lists. That is to determine which kind of flux checkpoints you have. If you have the NF4 version, you need to toggle the NF4 and disable the FP8 version, or you can use the normal loader. If you've been following my tutorials, or most of the time, you will be having the Flux FP8 version, so make sure it's selected. Then load the models and clip models, like we always do, and you're good to go. First, what's ControlNet? As the name implies, it helps control the way your image is generated. Think of it like giving the AI clear instructions, and then telling what you want in the final image. And there are different ways to do this. And what you see right here are three of those ways. You can see there are three ControlNet methods. If all three are selected, it will activate all three. And since we don't want that, we will be going one at a time. And if you're a beginner to control that, it will allow me to explain each model one by one. First, let's switch on Canny. Click on the arrow to move to that box. Now to use this, you need to first upload an image, as I've done right here. Next, for this node, you need to load the model, because for each of these control net methods to work, we need a model. You can download this model from the link in the description by going to this Hugging Face page. Then drop the model to Comfy UI Models Control Net. After refreshing, you should be able to select it. Now just write something you want related to the image. In my case, I type a female knight in a cathedral. Now I hit generate. You can see in the preview image, we get a black and white image. This is what Canny does. It takes your base image and then finds the sharp edges of the image. Then it applies these edges to your new generation. So the generation will have poses or features of the subject similar to the base image. There you go. If I take my image, you can see the hands, details, and even the background resembles both our prompt and our base image's sharp edges. If you want to customize the strength of the edges that are appearing, then this is the node you should focus on, because the rest of the nodes are pretty much the same. What is low threshold and high threshold? When detecting the edges, Canny checks the gradient or colors of each pixel, and it determines which pixels to choose for the edges under two conditions. It should be higher than the high threshold, and it should be lower than the low threshold. So if I increase the low threshold and decrease the high threshold, then obviously we're going to get more edges. That is what I did here, and here is our image. Now you can see it captured way more edges. Now thanks to that, you can see more little details are being captured. And if there isn't something in our prompt to match the edges, it is going to add something related to the image by itself. Next, let's move to the soft edge lines. Once again, you need to download the Soft Edges model from the link down below and going to the Hugging Face page. It should be placed in the same folder, and you should be able to select it. Right here, I have loaded an image of a normal bedroom. Now, what if I want to use this as a base image, but I want to transform it into a royal bedroom, just so people can know I sleep like a king? Well, I'll prompt for a royal bedroom and hit Generate. Now you can see in the preview box, we get an image, but with something more like brush strokes. This is very similar to Canny, but Soft Edge has the ability to preserve more details. For example, now in this generated image, you can see we have the basic features. The bed, the curtains, the lighting, the little gap in the ceiling, and even the blankets captured really well. Now to prove my point again, let me load our old image, type the same prompt, and hit generate. You can see in the preview image, we have captured more details. For example, this is our new image. This is the old image we got from Canny. In the new image, the details are captured well. Now she is holding a sword. In the old image, she, the female knight, is holding a metal bat. Maybe she felt like she needed to play baseball, but that's not what we need. Last but not least, we are moving to the depth method. Like the name implies, this is good at adding depth. If your photograph needs to show depth between the background and the subject, this is what would be perfect. For this, as usual, you need to download the depth model from the Hugging Face page, place it in the same folder, and then load it. The Marigold model below is another model that will assist in depth. This should be automatically downloaded when you load the Marigold model loader. Next, I have an image. Now, if I hit Generate, you can see the image we get adds white to the foreground and black to the background, which easily helps the AI figure out what kind of depth it should place between the foreground and background. Now, the image you get would be really horrible and give you nightmares, but I'll tell you why in a moment. 
But for now, look at how the subject is the focus, and we can see no background at all. And if you zoom in, you can notice how it has added that depth feel to it. Now, as for the horrible image, it's mainly because we have the seed set to fixed, so it's generating an image similar to your old image. Change that to randomize, load a different image or keep the same one, and hit generate. And there you go. Once again, notice the details. The foreground details are captured, but the background is completely different. And even in the foreground, notice how the sword is not present, but it's blended in with the dress. So while this can easily separate foreground and background, it cannot capture details well like canny. Unlike canny models, you don't get a way to control what details are captured directly, but the ensemble size option could help. If you go to the Hugging Face documentation of the model, you can see a higher ensemble size allows better precision. So if I increase it and then generate, you can see slight changes. The Use Tayset VAE option actually blends in the VAE more smoothly, and you can see some slight changes in the colors and details. So that is the tutorial for ControlNet with Flux. We still need more ControlNet models to get the artwork we need, but for now I hope this can give some tools to get you started. Throughout this whole lesson, I did not focus on any prompting techniques and kept the prompts simple as possible to just focus on the control net models. If you learned something, make sure to like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.